understanding of his or her story, empathetic and compassionate. These are things you need to have regardless of the model that you're using. Okay? Regardless of how chronic, intractable, or impossible a case may appear, if the client's view of the relationship is favorable, change is more likely to occur. Make sense? So this is about you and your relationship with your clients. Okay? So, you need to be thinking about cultural sensitivity, diversity, right? Varying perspectives. You want to be remaining curious. All of you talk, I'm sure all of you learn about um, when people say lean forward. Lean forward in their room. Ask questions. Let's find out about people's context, people's experiences. What does obesity mean to you and your family? Right? Um, think about joining, how important joining is. If you can join with a client, you can create miracles. You really can. Establishing trust. If a client trusts you, then they're open. They become open. Those boundaries are open for you to have a real critical dialogue, which can lead to change. So family system theory. All of you are experts in family system theory, correct? Y'all, yes. y'all. So this is really you know. Okay. <laughs> Marriage and family therapists have utilized family systems theory to develop additional theoretical perspectives and understanding regarding obesity and weight loss. An individual's experiences, such as obesity or psychopathology, must be viewed in the context of couple or family relationships. Instead of focusing on obese patients as isolated human beings, a family systems approach would include examining the patterns of interactions that exist between the patient and other parts of the larger system, right? And the subsystems. Make sense? So, systemic relational treatments, viewing obesity as a relational problem, would propel the therapist to gain information about the system. Access what keeps the problem in place and make room for alternatives that change the system's interactions. <coughs> Paying attention to systems and subsystems, as I mentioned before. Circular causality, y'all know that term? Y'all should. Um, how does weight impact self-esteem? How does self-esteem impact weight? So on and so forth. How do the relational interactions serve to maintain and give rise to the problem? Non-summativity, who can give me a definition? Anybody know non-summativity? Y'all are supposed to be experts at this point. Y'all graduate, y'all got the diplomas. Who can tell me non-summativity? Wow, we need a tutorial. Anybody? The system is greater than the sum of its parts. What does that mean, though? What does that mean? It means that there's multiple different factors that create an interaction or create a problem or create anything and um, you can't look at the problem without looking at all the parts of it. Okay, absolutely. So the system is greater than the sum of its parts. So one way that I think about it is I think about it's two people, right? Right? So you have it's one person, the second person, and then the interaction between those people. Right? So that's how the the system is greater than the sum, because the sum is two, but it's the two plus the interaction. Make sense? That's how I, how I studied for the exam. I was like, hold on, one, two, equals, okay. Um, <laughs> so, wholeness, change in one part of the, the system impacts the other, right? Systems as self-regulating, right? That's important to think about, especially when we think about obesity. Um, and homeostasis, resistance as a way to maintain stability, okay? Boundaries, whether they're open and closed systems. So family therapy. Research has suggested that family involvement, um, that family involvement is important. In several studies, many patients experience improvement when involved in family therapy related to obesity and weight related concerns. Um, parents are instructed to be supportive and understanding and are viewed as a part of the relational system. So there's lots of research that have been done um, in the field of family therapy, lots of articles that have been published that talks about the impact um, of family dynamics on uh, childhood obesity and then obesity in the family in general. So one of, um, one of the articles that was submitted, I know that you guys had some readings, 
I don't know if you all did them because I know what it's like to be a, uh, a student or a recent graduate. Um, but um, one study that myself and uh, Dr. Brooks, one of my um, fellow colleagues, did, um, we looked at um, college students and their perceptions and attitudes towards health and wellness. And what we found is that essentially was that childhood experiences and family experiences during childhood is what impacted um, how they viewed and made sense of obesity and health um, as, as young emerging adults in college. So that goes back to support the idea that um, it's important to think about not just working with adults but working with children because part of your experience through that time, at the time stamp, may impact your development over time. Okay? So applicable models, some of, someone mentioned CBT, everybody loves CBT, 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 right? Um, but structural therapy, there's something called the family viral model, solution focus, grief therapy, narrative, just topics around addictions, and art therapy. Um, so cognitive behavioral, just because it's, it's well versed, everyone knows it, everyone loves it, evidence-based, all this great stuff. Um, this treatment method can be used for anorexia, bulimia, and binge eating disorders. There are several different aspects of CBT. Physically helps the client to restore proper nutrition and weight. Um, cognitively targets psychological dilemmas um, that client may be facing, such as body dissatisfaction, depression, confidence, anxiety, so on and so forth. And behaviorally reestablishing regular healthy patterns of eating and other behaviors. Um, so obesity is defined, if obesity is defined as a behavior or compulsion problem, a therapist may approach treatment using CBT methods. Um, it can be beneficial six to ten weeks. Um, use of goals of behavioral change will help, the, help treat the behavioral issue of excessive eating if that's part of the issue. Um, goals combined with daily exercise may increase the likelihood of success. And when combined with exercise, um, the serotonin levels will, will rise and cause a more content lifestyle allowing for the client to not rely on antidepressants, okay? Structural family therapy, obesity may serve as a stabilizing function for the family system. When I read this, some of this, I was like, what? A stabilizing, right? Function of the family system. Obesity can be a symptom. Anyone heard that? Okay. Um, may be used to divert attention away from other issues or problems within a couple or family relationship. Right? So let's make obesity the issue so we don't really have to talk about the real deal um, about what's going on with me or you in our relationship. It can represent loyalty, alliance, boundaries, and security for the family system. So how people identify with their groups. Right? Attempts to remove the symptom without attending to its place within the system would likely be met with resistance, sabotage, or failure. So if you think about this within the context of couples, um, if you don't really talk about some of the underlying, potential underlying issues, resistance may occur. It may occur by your partner, by your family. Uh-uh, no, have some more food. They may have um, a desire for you to, to remain in your obese status. Okay? Multisystemic therapy, MST, any of you heard of it? Any of you do it on your jobs? Anybody heard about it in your, in your positions? Okay. So MST, multi-systemic therapy, is a community-based, family-driven treatment for antisocial delinquent behavior. That's kind of what it's known for, traditionally. Um, focuses on empowering caregivers or parents to solve current and future problems. MST, the client is, is the entire ecology, so it's very systemically based. Um, family, peers, school, neighborhood, et cetera. And highly structured supervision and quality assurance processes are employed. Okay? So it's interesting that multisystemic therapy is generally developed to focus on antisocial and um, delinquent behavior, but it's actually been applied and been proven to be successful when working with obese youth and families. <coughs> so some of the uh, brief assumptions and beliefs, children's behavior is strongly influenced by their families and friends and communities. <coughs> families are key to success. Families can live successfully without formal mandated services. Um, change can occur quickly. Uh, professional treatment providers should be accountable for achieving outcomes. It's kind of part of their practice. And science and research can provide guidance. So they have a causal model of delinquency, um, which basically looks at the impact of the family, um, low parent monitoring, low, low affection, high conflict, and that relates to delinquent behaviors and then um, other dynamics related to school, 
And there's a big push around the behavior of peers and how that creates delinquent behavior. Okay? So implementation. Uh, single therapists working intens intensively with four to six families at a time. Okay? I, I did um, MST um, several times. I worked um, as a therapist while I um, finished my master's and then also as part of my doctoral internship. I worked for a company um, that did MST and I, I love it actually. A lot of people don't like home-based services but it really um, was powerful for me. Um, work is done in the community, so I would have meetings in the home, school, neighborhood. Um, the MST therapist delivers all of the, of the services or treatment, um, and the therapist takes the lead role in the clinical decision making for each case. So there's actually, I know this is small, um, this is just the analytical process. It talks about the referral behavior, um, then you develop the desired outcomes, you know, what are the issues, what are the problems, and then you come up with these um, goals, and then you work with them on a weekly basis. Um, and you develop weekly goals that work towards addressing the overarching goals, essentially. Um, and then there's a, a process of assessment um, and going back and looking at the progress towards those goals. Um, a focus on working with individuals, families based in their own personal setting, once again, utilizing natural resources, focusing on developing realistic goals for clients based on personal situations and circumstances. So realistic, right? So if a patient has limited resources, it may not be realistic to expect them to pay for a gym membership. Right? Make sense? Okay. Um, as an alternative, one might encourage physical fitness outdoors. So even as a therapist, I have walked with um, clients around the block as part of their um, treatment um, program. Um, developing goals for weight loss, healthy eating, physical fitness. Um, developing treatment goals to address self-esteem, um, depression, self-care, and coping skills. Um, consulting with medical doctors or other professionals, so part of what I did was um, work in terms of psychoeducation and preparing um, a patient. You'd be surprised how many people don't even know how to like be assertive with a medical provider, right? So I would work with them and say, hey, let's talk about what you're going to say in your medical program, right? Um, developing a menu based on healthy eating habits that might be a part of it, interacting with clients in terms of physical fitness, various ways. Um, and so there's been a, a lot of research um, that's come out of MST services. Um, they do a lot of research and they have found that the use of multi-systemic therapy is, um, is successful specifically in, in working with um, obese African American youth and their families. It actually contributes to Im improving family interaction and family participation because what we know is that if families are involved, if parents are involved, that will uh, increase the likelihood of children being involved. Right? if we think about it from a structural perspective. Right? Um, also, there's been research that talks about utilizing um, MST addresses obesity and also diabetes as well. There's been a couple of studies on diabetes and MST specifically. So just some take-home tips, y'all, because I know it's time to, time to, for me to stop. Um, American family therapists can communicate with medical professionals, can help youth with coping skills, um, address sequences of events, talking about, okay, so you, um, you engage in, in binging and purging. Let's talk about this from a sequence perspective. So first, this happened at school. Someone teased you and they called you X, Y, Z. Then you felt this way. Then you did this. Then you decided to do this. So kind of looking, breaking it down into the sequence of events to think about other ways to um, interact and to potentially talk about coping. Um, processing emotions, right? Um, assess motivation for behavior change, developing behavior modification plans, and implementing family change. So I just said I was going to talk a little bit about uh, potential employment. All of y'all are, are gainfully employed, correct? Some of y'all looking or all y'all gainfully employed? You looking for that? Not yet. Oh, okay. Let me know. So, um, <laughs> so pediatric obesity clinics, so there's like an emergence of them. A lot of um, in hospital settings they might have pediatric obesity clinics. They are looking for um, therapists with, you know, a background in, in, or an interest in working with youth and families as it relates to um, health in general, um, whether it's obesity, whether it's other types of medical issues, it's definitely an area that you should consider if you have an interest. Um, teen adolescent clinics, obviously, collaborative health centers, community programs. I've done a lot of work in the community. Um, there's lots of uh, programs in the community that are looking for behavioral specialists, people with some expertise in addressing some of the psychological kind of mental health aspects or dimensions um, of obesity and other health issues um, for specific populations. Health promotion in school systems, 
right? These are potential opportunities for um, jobs. Weight loss surgery centers, I've done a lot of assessments for individuals presenting for weight loss surgery. Um, I've done pre-assessments, um, um, looking at if they're ready, if they're, do you know what you're really about to get yourself into? Because uh, people think it's taking the easy way out, but it's really not. Um, and then also working, I've worked with individuals and couples after surgery, right? So we know there's a whole lot of things that go on afterwards. Um, it may show up in private practice, home-based services. I worked for a company called Community Solutions. It's, it's known all over um, in the U.S. and they actually have international teams, which is really, I think, fascinating. Um, MST is done all over the world. And so um, if you're ever interested in international work, um, not just Community Solutions, but other companies that utilize MST, they may have international teams. Uh, so think about that. Um, inpatient, outpatient, of course, and then health and wellness camps. So lots of camp programs. Um, there's been research on obesity camps and MFT as well. Um, it's just another thing to, to uh, consider if that's an interest of yours. I'm done. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> any, any questions really quickly before I think we're going to take a break or something? We're going to take a break, but we have um, about five, six minutes for questions. Okay. Um, we have break. Any questions? Y'all can talk to me now and later. Who else? I'm curious what when you say you do assessments for um for oh my gosh, my mind is like their answer surgery? Yes. Mm -hmm. What do you, do you have a requirement of engaging in some kind of therapy or like like um being able to show some behavioral change even before? Um, so I'll talk about it from my perspective. I think it's important but it's really dependent on insurance. So every insurance is going to have their own perspective on what they, they require for their patients. And so um, some are required to simply get a letter. So they'll say, hey, I need to get an assessment. Can I be with you for one or two sessions? And then can you write this letter saying that I'm good to go? Um, in my opinion, that's an unfortunate thing. Um, but it's about, you know, it's really, it's really about risk management, to be 100% honest. It's about how do I make sure that this client is not about to have surgery and then they're going to go into suicide. Um, so a lot of it is unfortunately about risk uh, management as opposed to like really trying to work with um, clients to help them improve. But some uh, medical providers are very good at saying, hey, you know, maybe you should go um, for a couple of months. See if you really want to have surgery, you know, it's kind of extreme, uh, you know, kind of sort through some of those things. So there are, I think, some specific providers that might um, recommend that. But what I have seen to be the, the majority of the cases is like, I need a letter from you saying that, hey, I'm a, a okay to go. What are your thoughts on I mean, the clients are coming in who's obese, but they're not necessarily coming in for obesity? Or um, I'm, I'm also thinking of the body positive movement sure. as well. I'm Absolutely. just curious about your thoughts and how that relates to their kind of approach that. Yeah, so I mean, I think it goes back to your position as a therapist, right? Mm -hmm. And so, um, I think about it's important to lean forward and find out how the client, um, the client's perspective. And so I'm going to work with them on their own perspective. Um, I think that, um, as I mentioned before, the health at every way, body acceptance movement. There's lots of discussions around, um, you know, different body sizes and how that's perfectly fine and a okay. And so, um, for me, I kind of lean forward and ask them kind of what their perspective is. So I'm not going to come in and say, okay, you're like. That doesn't make, like you were talking about going to a doctor's appointment. I, I had the same experience. I came here for a cold, and you tell me, okay, you need to lose weight. Okay, come on now. Like, like I don't know that, first of all. Like, I, how are you going to tell I don't know I need to lose weight? I know that already. Right. I'm oh walking God, around I'm so this body. That. No, I didn't like, know what's bad this whole time. Like, I didn't know. You just, like, what are you talking about? Um, <laughs> so, you know, I kind of go with the client and find out what their perspective is first, and then kind of use that as a way to develop those. So the goals may not be to lose weight. It may be to feel better about myself. It may be to, you know, there's all kinds of different goals. So it's, it's thinking about what their goals are, specifically the client. Um, I'm curious about seeing this in perhaps posture theory or UCMS. Because I say that because um, I work for a program in Chicago where they had a homeless youth program. And there was one. Woman in particular who came in and was addressing like all the human habits and issues and stuff. And I remember sitting there and going, was go check that, right? Because with homeless youth, you have to address all these underlying issues and stuff. 
And so I'm wondering, you know, you listed a lot of potential employment, but can you see that being implemented in like foster care or DCFS? Absolutely. Um, I actually um, have done some trainings for um, an adoption and foster care program mm -hmm. and helping them to think about um, addressing health issues <coughs> and within families and youth. So I definitely think it's, it's a, a good way to, it's a good avenue for employment. Um, I kind of go in and do training, so um, you, could, you could probably work directly with the agency, but I've also just kind of done trainings for them, for some of the, the professionals. And um, I've talked about healthy eating behaviors, lots of discussions around um, food hoarding and lots of issues related to trauma um, with, with young children who may have been neglected or abused and how that impacts their um, food behaviors. And so it definitely is possible. Um, I'm really curious about um, I mean, your work in this particular um, area yes, and how that will have, how do you see it being different if you had a loss, like all that weight, like how would the message be received? You know how would it be different? <laughs> so are you saying like if I came in here and I was on the right side and I was right, like, I was about yeah. Like how? Because I feel like as healthcare professionals, like mm -hmm. I'm thinking about the fat. Dollars, no, no, I, no, I get it. Right? Um, you know, I don't really know what how it would if it would be different or the same or how how the reception might be. I think that um, you know it's interesting. Like I have been to the doctor and like I remember the doctor was like, "Oh yeah, you need to lose weight," but I'm like, "Okay, but you're not really that smart yourself." So I'm really <laughs> Um, but, but like I don't know, you know, I think that I think that the person who presents the information, people do think about about me. So just like if I come up and talk to you, what's the first thing that you think about me? Just from how I look or your perceptions of what that means, right? And so I think that, you know, body size probably does have an impact on how you're received. I don't really know because a lot of my um, um, transition into this um, in terms of my professional work happened kind of simultaneously as I was going through my own weight loss process and completing my dissertation. So it was like, it was really interesting. That's a whole other topic. Um, but it happened and I was like, oh my gosh, this is my life. This is my work. This is like everything. It's coming together. Like it was just it was a weird moment. But nevertheless, I think it probably can um, impact maybe how people think about it. But I think it's important to have diversity in everything that you do. I think it's important to have um, people at all shapes and sizes represented in, in this um, industry and talking about health because there's different ways that you can talk about it. I think one of the things that give me credibility outside of my professional accolades is just my own experience. People are like, oh, you get what I'm saying. Because a lot of times you have people who come in with an expert kind of mentality and it's like you have no clue what it's like to be 375 pounds, 400 pounds, whatever the case may be. You just have no clue. You're telling me to do things that are not realistic for me, my family, my children, whatever the case may be. So I think that it is important to have people across the spectrum because then you can offer something <coughs> unique and different. So, that's my question. Okay. Last, last question. Could you share some of your experiences with doing the collaborative work? Because I imagine you've been collaborating with medical providers, mm -hmm. and also you mentioned you're doing some community work. Mm -hmm. So can you share some of your experiences with kind of forming that collaborative team and kind of the work that's done kind of from different disciplines? Yeah, um, I think in, in terms of the collaborative health, uh, a lot of it started with um, my Position when I was at Mercer because their MFT program in Housing School of Medicine is already. Are you at? Oh, okay. So it's already this perspective around collaborative health, and so we were <coughs> training medical students and having medical students transition to our family therapy center, and then also building relationships with the um, clinic at, at the local hospital. Um, so I just kind of based on my interests, I, I would go to them and say, "Hey, this is who I am. I really like to be a part of what you're doing." Um, what do you think about collaborating? So I've developed from lots of relationships with um, medical providers, nursing staff. Um, I'm doing research with some bariatric surgeons right now, all kinds of things. Um, and then in the community, um, the same thing. I just kind of went out to people um, and said, hey, this is who I am, this is what I do. A big part of my mission is to translate all this like mumbo jumbo and academia to like a larger population. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes you have to go directly to the people because guess what? Everybody's not gonna come into your therapy room. And so to me, my perspective is, yeah, I can work with people who come in and see me, but there's a lot of people that are afraid to come see me, that don't wanna talk about these issues. And so it's important for me to translate this work <laughs> from academia to a larger audience. So I go to the, go to the, go to the community and who I am and this is why I wanna do. 
Thank you all.